Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Wednesday, April 18th, 2018. Happy hump day, everybody. So let's take a look at some space weather news and some headlines around the world. Take a look at our solar wind speed today. Sitting at 314.6 kilometers per second with a density of 1.6. Zero sunspots to report on today. That makes it number three days in a row now. Sunspot zero. And now 66 days for 2018 as we are rolling strong into this minimum. Our KP indice is sitting at a one and our 24 hour max was sitting at a two. And looking at the SDO, we see that giant size corona hold has really opened up over the last uh, few hours <clears throat> and now we are looking at uh, a little bit bigger corona hole opening uh, could mean a little bit more intense solar wind speeds on the 19th and the 20th of april and we take a look at the motion sdo <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. Um, very active region on the eastern limb as it comes into full picture here. Uh, just like a lot of the sunspots that we've seen here over the last several days, uh, very active coming over the eastern limb. And by the time they get earth facing, they kind of fizzle out into sunspots no more. And that has been the case with uh, the last two sunspot groupings that we've seen, AR2704 and I do believe we had an AR2705, but that was very short-lived. So keeping our eyes on the eastern limb to see if this sunspot grouping can hold its act together. Taking a look at our TSI rating as of April 9th, 2018, we slightly dropped a little bit to 1360.685. That was down from 1360.697. So you see how slight the drop is here. And, but that's about the process and how fast things move when it comes to monitoring the total solar irradiance. It's not something that we're going to wake up one day and it's going to drop down to 1359.5 and, you know, stay there. If it does, it'll be a brief dip. It'll come right back up. But this uh, continuing declination will take place throughout many, many years. Let's take a look for a couple of headlines. Gamma ray supernova remnants shed light on cosmic rays. Astronomers are hoping to learn more about the mysterious nature of cosmic rays by scrutinizing three possible supernova remnants that are emitting very high energy gamma rays. And here they have an example here. We'll leave the link in the description here, guys. A new astronomy and astrophysics paper presents a meta-analyst of the potential supernova remnants using data from a high energy stereoscopic system. We'll call it the HESS telescope array in Nambia. While much of the study expands on previous research, the, finding, the findings provide a point of comparison for scientists studying the origin of cosmic rays, energetic particles that fly through the Milky Way at relative speeds. Very high gamma rays are most energetic from radiation and have the smallest wave leaks on the electromagnetic spectrum. They are emitted during extremely energetic events such as the aftermath of supernova explosions. Hess is optimized to find the most energetic gamma rays with energies between 0.03 and 100 tera electron volts. TEV, TEV in parentheses. That's the, uh, the abbreviation. As expanding layers of an exploded star slam into the surrounding medium, the shocked gas emits radio waves. Sometimes gamma rays too, though supernova remnant has never been seen that solely radiates gamma rays. Yet the astronomers couldn't pinpoint a radio source for two of the three suspected remnants, possibly because they lie in a crowded plane of the Milky, Lane, Milky Way. More study will be needed to find better understanding of the nature of these sources, says Hess collaborator uh, Gerdy Pulhofer, uh, University of Tungman, Germany. One of the larger goals of the Hess is uh, from which the study comes from is to better understand the origin of cosmic rays. Cosmic rays are unstable, gradually decaying into other subatomic particles and emitting gamma rays in the process. So hope you got a little bit of something out of this article here, but interesting enough on how they are trying to analyze remnants of supernova to learn more about cosmic rays and their effects. 
And speaking of com- cosmic rays, spike in cosmic radiation triggers lightning flashes. And I brought this up. This is an older story. I don't think I talked about it. But um, India is normally an area that is uh, prone to these lightning strikes. But I wanted to bring this up. <clears throat> uh, they bring up some interesting stats here. Increase in instances of lightning over India's subcontinent could be the result of a spike in intensity of cosmic rays across the globe, according to the study conducted by scientists from Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. The study found that a 2-3% to rise in cloud cover and lightning activities over the Indian subcontinent in the last 15 years, which could possibly be connected to an increase in intensity of cosmic rays, which have spiked by 3.5% around the globe. So indeed, that uh, these folks are onto something when they're talking about that the increase of cosmic rays are causing the intensity of lightning to go up and the, even more strikes than what they're already used to out here. Um, this is a perfect example too of a atmosphere with highly charged particles in it. This purple sky, it, this is always a representation that we have a, abundance of highly charged particles. And just looking at the lightning alone uh, tells you you could it's a lot more intense. So this is a perfect example of cosmic ray influx and the abundance of the particles that are in our atmosphere with the purple skies and the intense lightning. Link is in the description. Back over to Puerto Rico. Boy, this these guys can't catch a break. Island-wide blackout. An electrical contractor working to restore power in Puerto Rico accidentally knocked out a major transmission line on the Wednesday leaving the entire island without power. Now, they've already been without power since Maria. They got it back up in certain areas. And then apparently what had happened is that one of the subcontractors was driving a bulldozer and took out a high voltage power line, which then domino affected all of the grid. And now they are talking about not even getting power back up for most areas up for another 36 hours. Uh, welcome to Puerto Rico. This is the life we know, says Aguaro Perez, a former Major League Baseball player and ESPN commentator who is host- hosting the news conference. Uh, I, you know, by the way, the guy that, that tore the line down, and I'm assuming it was an accident, but you can only understand the frustration of the government in Puerto Rico. And th- they fired the guy that did this um, accident. And basically, you can hear in the tone of the um, of Mr. Gonzalez. You know, he's saying, you know, he's the op- he's the chief operating officer of this situation here, and he says he's angry. This is the second time in a row. He said, "I give the people of Puerto Rico my word. We are going to restore power to every last house." And the reason why I wanted to make that point is that two things. One, you know, when your when your when your continent, your state, your country, your city is suffering and you are in charge you you call the shots you know your word is everything at this point and i can only imagine the frustration of the citizens of puerto rico right now um blame it on poor infrastructure it doesn't matter poor planning poor pre-maintenancing the point is is that these people are tired of being in the dark there's no reason why <clears throat> seven months later this uh area shouldn't be restored with power and the second thing i wanted to bring up too is that again you know, what does this have to do with the grand solar minimum? This is just a small example of the possibilities if an area like Puerto Rico or other areas in the world lose the, the grid. These are the complications of getting the grids back up. You're going to have your accidents. You're going to have mistakes along the way. They had to rewire essentially the entire island. So uh, th- this story is important to me. It has nothing to do with the grand solar minimum in this instance. But the storm that knocked the power out does have everything to do with the climate changing and how intense everything is. So this is just a small and unfortunate example. And I sympathize for the people of Puerto Rico. And I I hope they can get things back on track. This is something I had to throw in here for my friends over there in the UK. I'm super jelly. Starman, everyone else that uh, follows us who's over there in the UK, uh, you guys enjoy this. You deserve it. The beast from the east will seem like a distant memory in parts of England as temperatures soar on what is expected to be the hottest day of the year so far, which is not to say much as cold as it's been. You know, 60 degrees is probably the warmest day of the year so far at 18. 
The mercury has reached a high of 25 Celsius, which here in America, that's 77 degrees Fahrenheit. In the southeast, according to forecasters, which is 10 degrees Celsius higher than the UK average. Um, I can't imagine what this is like wearing shorts. I don't, I don't even know what those are. After the winter that we've had, I can't imagine exposing any kind of uh, skin to the climate right yet. Here it is, April 18th, um, driving around earlier today. A young man was uh, bringing trash cans from the side of the house, and he's wearing shorts. And, you know, instinctly, instinctly, right now, this time of the year, it's okay to wear shorts. But unfortunately, we're still dealing with winter-like temperatures. But I just wanted to give a shout-out to my friends over there in the U.K., uh, Henrik over there in Denmark. Hopefully you get some of this warmth as well. Guys have some good weather. This looks awesome. Get out and enjoy it. Cherish this climate while you can, especially when we're getting above average temperatures. And we go back to the depressing U.S. when it says, Will snow in parts of northeastern U.S. Thursday be winter's last hoorah? Maybe. A storm will bring snow and a wintry mix to the interior northeastern United States on Thursday again. And they're asking, is this going to be the last one? Well, a general coating to an inch or two is snow is likely from northern Ohio and parts of northern and western Pennsylvania to western and central northern New York and central and northern <clears throat> New England, as you see here in the map. Because of this time of the year, paved and concrete surfaces tend to absorb a good deal of the sun's energy by day and remain higher temperature than the grassy elevated surfaces at night. So we're looking at more grass coverage. And this was kind of like what we had with that ice storm over the weekend. A lot of that ice and the videos that we put out, you saw a lot of that ice accumulation in the grass mainly and not so much on the uh, concrete a little bit in the trees but that was higher up as well along interstate 95 corridor from washington dc to baltimore philadelphia new york city boston hartford connecticut and portland maine all or mostly rain will fall it is possible where and when it rains hard that wet snowflakes or a dash of sleet may be mixed in which you know looking at this uh, precipitation line we got rain sleet and snow uh surely anything is possible here in the northeast this weekend i don't know about you guys if you're up here if you live up here like we do enough is enough um like i said i am dry but or i am jealous of the uk but here is what i wanted to show as well much of the region can expect a dry stretch sunny weather from friday through monday that's what i'm talking about folks and everybody here in the northeast uh this is a well-deserved break uh i know most of us have dealt with uh, inches of snow, flooding, rain, you name it. Uh, right now, I think all of Buffalo is a, is a swamp area. So dry and sunny is what I want to see. And that's not bad for a stretch of four to five days. While we're over here in the Northeast, I wanted to show this. Erie PA is an inch and a half away from breaking Buffalo's snowfall record. They have closed it within a single inch. Uh, Pennsylvania City got a big boost Tuesday with 4.6 inches of snow this last Tuesday that brings the total now to 198 and a half inches for the year I'm sorry that was for Tuesday of this week forecast models suggest there's at least another inch of snow in tonight's skies maybe even two to not only eclipse Buffalo's all-time mark set during the winter that brought the blizzard of 77 but also hit the 200 mark 200 inch mark for the year 200 an inch 200 inches of snow in one year folks so that is a huge historic record um to say the least and to you know buffalo it's in my opinion has always been kind of king of the lake effect snows and this year erie was the bullseye so and here is the forecasted map for erie as it shows we are probably going to get another two inches of snow so they are probably in line to break this record and I think Thursday is possible. We'll look at the extended forecast, but I think Thursday might be the last chance for snow around this area. And I don't want to talk about that. It's more of the same. Basically, this this headline here, say goodbye to spring, Arctic weather drives a cold across the U.S. And, you know, it's just more of the same. These headlines are unreal. And when I show you guys these flood headlines, they're almost all identical. 20 killed, 33,000 displaced as floods continue affecting Kenya. Another flood in Africa. According to the flood list, this is the third wave of flooding in the country since March of this year. At least 15 people have died. Hundreds forced to evacuate their homes after flooding in mid-March. 
Before that, seven people died in Kenya during a period of heavy rain and flash flood. I remember that. We covered it. Several counties have uh, several counties have been affected at this time. Um, the Turkana and the Tanga River among the worst that were hit. Floods have cut major road networks, causing transportation issues. In addition, homes and crops have been destroyed, and power supplies have been severely damaged. And just looking at these pictures, folks, it says it all. People being rescued in boats, waist-high water. There's a tree that's that looks like water is at least three to four feet uh, high there, if not higher in spots. Go over here. Massive floods hit... Uh, Martinique after 9.8 inches of rain in just six hours. This is a Caribbean island. And according to the Metro France St. Joseph, they recorded 6.88 inches, inches of rain in just six hours. 6.2 in Le Robert. Uh, I'm sorry. And 9.84 inches in Le Francois. During the same period of a whopping 125 millimeters, that's 4.92 inches in just one hour, the storm closed schools and flooded roads, stranding thousands of people. Some 1,200 people, uh, students and teachers were trapped in their school buildings, surrounded by floodwaters. All were able to return to their homes later in the day. Officials said more than 200 firefighters, police, and two helicopters will mobilize to effect, to help the affected. A rare hailstorm, the second in two years, was also reported mainly in Francois and La Uh Guys, these are common pictures that we're seeing over everywhere now, not just in these remote areas. And of course, these remote areas get hit the hardest because it's a lot harder to get to them to get supply their infrastructures older maybe weaker i'll show you another one here we go more flooding severe weather claims 12 lives affects a thousand or thousands in colombia at least 12 people have been killed 1341 families affected by the severe weather that's that uh, at the start of the current rainy season in colombia april through may this country's national disaster risk management and agency reports that since the start of the season the country experienced 103 severe weather events, including thunderstorms, heavy rains, floods, and flash floods, landslides, and hail. Showing here where the most uh, worst affected areas are. 1,300 families affected, 11 homes were destroyed, and over 1,000 were damaged. While the country is now less vulnerable to severe weather events, thanks to the construction of 5,400 migration works and installation over 100 warning systems, so the continued uh, of watching these floods, wa again, waste high water here. Of course, that's a child, but still you're looking at least two to three feet of water. And another flood headline. This one here is in Tanzania and Dar es Salaam. And heavy rains have hit there the past couple of days. Buildings have collapsed, widespread flooding. You know, Heavy rain started falling on April 14th, forcing authorities to order school closures again. 24 hours and they, uh, between the 14th and 15th recorded 3.22 inches of rain and 4 inches over the next 24 hours. So another 7 inches of rain. And, you know, 7 inches of rain, folks, that's almost 2 months worth of rain for some folks. And they got that in one day. And why are we seeing that? Now, look, I'm showing all of this because... We're talking about cosmic rays the last couple of days. I've, I've featured a couple of articles that are showing radiation protection suits and all that and, and new research on cosmic rays and how people are looking at supernova remnants now to try to figure out what's going on and what how these actually work. Get a better understanding. But this is really one of the biggest end results of cosmic ray influx are these type of flooding events where the water levels are so high. We're so saturated right now in so many parts of the world because of cosmic ray influx. More particles in the atmosphere forms more uh, raindrops, more snowflakes. You can have all the evaporation and the moisture you want, but if you don't have the particles in the atmosphere to support the raindrops and snowflakes, we don't get the precipitation like that. You know, it's, it's basic science. If it's cold outside, you got snowpack, no clouds are going to form over the snowpack because cold air sinks. Only warm air holds moisture. 
So areas that don't have snow on the ground and the melt is evaporating into the atmosphere, well, you're going to get clouds. And a lot of it has to do with the instantaneously of increased amounts of cosmic rays in the atmosphere helps create the clouds even faster. It's very important that we get a better understanding on cosmic rays and how they affect us and not just the climate, but our health too. All right, that's enough of my cosmic ray rant. Take a look at tropical tidbits and I'm not going to go through step by step here because I looked at the forecast earlier and it's pretty much the same as it was last night. Nothing much has changed except for the fact that um, we still have a chance of snow for this week. Uh, the storms in the south that we talked about, the good soaking rain that Texas is going to get, everything looks pretty much the same even at the end of the month where we see that big trough of moisture going through. Uh, I'll pause it real quick. That storm in the south that's going to start here, this is going to be some well-needed rain right here. So Saturday, April 21st, this is the next storm system that will affect um, any kind of storm situations or aggravate any flooding into the south. And they do look like they're going to get the majority of the heavy rain once again in Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Alabama, Georgia, and the Panhandle of Florida. Once again, you guys will see heavy precipitation once again. So I don't see anything changing with the weather pattern. Now, the only thing that I am looking forward to in the next few days is that we actually get to move out of winter and maybe start some kind of a spring. Uh, and looking at the temperature run right here for the next uh, 10 to 15 days looks very promising even up into the northeast as we start to see temperatures breaking into the 50s and of course getting closer to may uh, we start to see some 60s pop up in there but you know for the most part even in april mid-april we still see a lot of cold air uh with us through to about this weekend and that's when we start to see a little bit of improvement in the northeast and I think finally spring starts to kick in, hopefully for the majority of the country by the 23rd, 24th of April. So I'm crossing my fingers. I'm not gonna say this is the last snowfall either because every time I've done that, we get a bigger snowstorm than the following week. So I'm just gonna stop saying the S word and hope that it all goes away and stops at some point. Mari, how are you doing tonight? I am doing just fine. I'm just... uh Dealing with the chat, we got some people that are being a little offensive and it's calling, causing a little bit of a stir, so I'm trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. We might have to block some people, we'll see. Uh, this chat's intended to be on topic with Grand Solar Minimum, extreme weather, you know, current events related to that, space stuff, cool weather stuff, okay. Uh, just stay respectful, folks, that's all I can ask yeah, in we the could chat. I don't think we care about what you talk about in the chat. I think it's all about respect and not uh, being hateful. Not everybody's going to agree. Uh, we all see that. Uh, no, not everybody's going to be eye to eye, even in the Grand Solar Minimum, minimum community. Um, and I think Mario is just stressing that it's important to keep an open mind. And there's really no need for any kind of disrespectful to any of the subs here for their beliefs. Or even, even if you don't agree with ours, uh, surely I would not tolerate one of our subs uh, disrespecting someone just because they don't agree with our policy. And unless you're being hateful and nasty yourself, which, you know, that's always a possibility. <laughs> well, it just, it comes with the territory. It our sure does. is growing and we have almost, I think, last I checked, we had like 145 people watching. Oh. Um, so as more people join the community chats, we just, you know, got to keep an eye Good on stuff. it. I, I, I will give people times out. So I don't ask for much. I just ask for people to be respectful. We have people worldwide in this chat and we gather here daily to share thoughts to, you know, contribute to a better world, not to knock people down or bring people down. Sure. We genuinely humbly want to make this a better planet going into the future so we all can adapt to the changes we're experiencing you have been warned <laughs> all right guys i think we're gonna wrap it up on that note everybody be kind to each other out there come on now we got a lot to deal with we don't need pettiness in in local chat rooms now do we 
Um, with that being said, though, guys, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll shoot for 8.30. I think 7.30 is a good time for us. But just in case, uh, it might be an 8.30 start tomorrow, uh, however the case may be. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight. We hope you have a good evening. We will talk soon. Thank <laughs> you.